Thank you, Bill. I um, have reached the age where I can quote a psalm that I couldn't quote when I was younger. It said, King David said, I was young and now I'm, an old, and now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his descendants begging bread. And so that's true. That's true. And, uh, and so uh, if you think it's, uh, if you think it's um, a risk, it is. That's how you spell faith, R-I-S-K. But it's a calculated risk. Our God is big and he honors his word. So take the risk. But uh, let me read a passage of scripture. Then I want to have um, our brother uh, Clay Brooks come down. And he's going to lead us in prayer for the Ukraine and the Russia situation. But I want to uh, uh, read this first. And Clay, you can come on down and, and we'll go right into that. <clears throat> but um, this verse... I want to set it up with this ver these, these couple of verses in Ephesians. It says, Paul says to the church there, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. And I think he, he, he has already talked about them putting on the whole armor, but he says you're going to need the helmet on because there's some um, challenges to your thinking that are going to come. And by the way, I just remember Joe is homesick, so read your bulletin in your texting or in your email, and uh, you'll find out what's going on. She said, just remember to tell him this just came to me. Just remember to tell them, Wednesday night, we do have worship night this coming Wednesday night, so don't miss that. Anyway, he says, take the helmet of salvation so that you can remember what you're supposed to remember. And uh, I just put that on. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance. Say this, all perseverance. All perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, Paul says, that the... Uh, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in change, chains that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to think. There are saints in Russia and the Ukraine that this brother knows. And so I wanted to, I've seen some videos and stuff that are heart-wrenching, heart-wrenching. And some of the praying I could only do by the groanings of the Spirit. But I knew he could lead us in a way that's uh, where you're, you're connected in a way that there's faces involved. So I wanted him to lead us. And when he starts praying, I want us to stand and agree because we're, we're, we're dealing in the spiritual side of this thing. But, it, but it's still warfare and we don't uh, want to miss the, the, the physical um, <clears throat> you know, standing rather than sitting. I think standing represents warfare a little better than sitting. So uh, go ahead, brother. Just share what's on your heart. <clears throat> Amen. Um, I just want to mention one other thing too. Is as we pray about this and 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 think about this and hear different things about what's happening over there. Is is um, yes, we know many people there. We have uh, they're like <coughs> family, you know, to us. And we even here have a Russian in our uh, church. So we need to be careful That's true. <laughs> what we say and how, yeah. because there, there's not just one bad person in this. Let me tell you, there's history that you don't know about that. Uh, and, and here, just this verse I read today, in Amos chapter five, therefore at such a time, the prudent person keeps silent for it is an evil time. And there are times that we need to watch what we say and we need to just pray. And we thank God we can pray in the Spirit and, and, yeah, amen. and have things accomplished that, that only God and only the Spirit of God can pray through us. So um, God, yes, we know Lord. He hates war. Yeah. And, and all of this could have been avoided. So, Lord, we, we come together, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. And, Lord, you have called us to be peacemakers, Lord. And we thank you, Father, that you have called us to pray. And you said for us to pray for all who are in authority, Lord, because our prayers can make a difference. So, Father, we pray, Lord God, Father, that you would move 
in this situation in Russia and in Ukraine and in all of Europe and in its affecting and influencing all of this world, Father. Lord, and we pray you would bring a quick end, Lord, to the conflict in Jesus' name. Father, and that you would open eyes to see all that needs to be seen, Father, in what has been going on and what has happened, Lord, in this situation. And Father, we pray for your people, Lord. We pray your protection over, Lord, your people, Father, all over that area, Lord God. Lord, your, the children, the mothers, the families, the husbands, the brothers, the sisters, all that are involved, all the people that, that are grieving over what has happened in this, Lord God. And we, we ask you, Lord God, to, to move quickly, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, and, and we thank you, God, for Romans 8.28, Lord, that you can take what the enemy has meant for evil, Lord, in a situation, Father, and you can turn it all around, Lord, and, and, and bring something good from what evil has happened and what the enemy has done, Lord, and we pray for that, Lord God, and we, we thank you, Lord, Lord, for your love and your great mercy and your power, and even though, Lord, you said Lord, that in these, these, these days, Father, that there would be wars, there would be rumors of wars and kingdoms coming against kingdoms. You told us to, to not be afraid. So, Father, I, I, I pray, Father, Lord, your peace over your people, Lord, and we speak peace over Europe, we speak peace into Ukraine, Father, and, Lord, that your will would be done, Lord, in the name of Jesus and not the will of the enemy. In Jesus' name, Father, amen. Clay, we can lay that up there if you want. Well, praise God. I know that uh, in times of peace, it's easier to preserve life. In times of war, it's easier for the devil to come and steal, kill, and destroy. So uh, we want peace, and we want uh, the will of God to be manifest in that region, that area. And uh, we want uh, our God is so big that he can, Romans 8, 28, it, he can make a, a good things come out of it. And... Uh, uh, there be something that advances the kingdom come out of it so <clears throat> excuse me this is a good time though for me to talk about this and what I want to talk about this morning is perser persevering in prayer there are um, times that we pray for things and the answers are swift thank you Jesus and there's times we pray for things for a long period of time and the answers seem to linger on about their fu being fulfilled. And then there's times we're praying for things and the serious prayer needs accumulate on top of the ones you're already praying for. We're in a time like that. We're in times where uh, Dan and I are on a national prayer call uh, five days a week. Uh, we're, we have a prayer meeting up here on Tuesday mornings. We're on another national prayer call on Tuesday nights. So that's uh, seven. And then I was asked the other day about doing one on Saturday night. I said, look, that's, I'm already doing seven uh, that, that are scheduled. I, we can pray uh, spontaneously, but I don't want to put another one on my schedule yet. But um, anyway, the, the, the opportunities to pray abound. And the, the things that we need to cover in prayer abound. Paul said, praying always with all prayer and supplication. And he said, be watchful with all perseverance. And so what I realized is that sometimes persevering in prayer is very difficult because you get drained, you get down, you get your um, hope deferred file gets thicker than your desire fulfilled file, you know, uh, Proverbs thirteen twelve, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but desire fulfilled is the tree of life. And I'm looking at my hope, hope deferred file keeps getting stuff put in it. You know, we prayed about this, nothing happened. We prayed about this, it got worse. We prayed about this, and uh, no answer. We prayed about this. Oh, here's an answer. Hallelujah, I got one in the desire fulfilled. <laughs> but, but this file over here is getting hard to carry. And per persevering in prayer then requires something more than just willpower. Something more than just, I'm just going to do this because it's the right thing to do, and then the answer is going to be right there. Well, we, we are promised and prophesied that we will experience an Amos 9, 13 season where those things um, 
where there'll be a supernatural reciprocity where when you pray, the answer's already on the way. Some things happen that way, and, and I, I trust that we're going to walk into uh, a, a, a time like that, but I, don't, uh, but I believe we'll walk into it by being faithful in times like these. Yeah. He that's faithful with a little will be faithful with much. Oh, you took care of uh, this much den uh, dinar and um, the, this many talents and this much finance. Um, make him ruler of ten cities. I mean, it just went from you're faithful with this, you're ruling ten cities. And so there's a time where you step into something that's way beyond what we, um, what we thought was um, going to be the outcome. So I'm believing for that. But in the meantime... Paul makes it clear that we are supposed to persevere in prayer. Now, let me just say this, that uh, in the Scriptures, persevering has a little bit of a different connotation than enduring. Endurance, uh, usually the Greek word used uh, that's translated endurance, um, often it has to do with dealing with people. Sometimes it's translated um, long-suffering, sometimes it's translated patience, and then also the word that's used for perseverance is also translated endurance. But generally the pattern is that when you're enduring, you're dealing with, it's, it's like in my mind, I see Rocky Balboa. Anybody have seen the Rocky? One through five, okay. <clears throat> Rocky's enduring. He's getting hit, boom, hit, boom, hit, boom, hits the floor, gets up, he won't stay down. He's enduring the uh, onslaught of a specific adversary. Uh, Paul makes it clear, the Scriptures makes it clear, that we have to endure sometimes the, uh, the, uh, the offenses or people who are offending us, people who are doing things to hurt us, and we have to endure. But perseverance usually has to do with pressing through uh, negative circumstances, circumstances that seem like you just go, you, it would be easy to give up. The, um, the road starts going uphill at a greater angle. Are you going to persevere in the race or are you going to step to the side? <clears throat> we had a, when I was in high school, uh, our attitude toward long distance running wasn't what it is today. It was punishment for those who made the coach mad. And I had this mouth for some reason and um, that would say what I thought was funny things. He didn't think it was so funny. And so he uh, would punish me by putting me in the long distance runs, which at that time was a mile and two mile. Well, uh, well, actually it was just the two mile, <clears throat> and, um, the, w which nobody wanted to run. And um, I was a freshman in high school and nobody even on the varsity wanted to run the two mile. It was just like torture. So. Nowadays, you got cross country, you know, they're out there for seven miles, you know, whatever they're doing. But in those days, it was like, oh my gosh, he's got to run the two, he's got to run for two miles. Well, what I did was when I w would be at the meet, I would just check out mentally and my body would find a rhythm and I'd just run. And I'd be thinking about bass fishing, something else that was enjoyable. And then the race would be over and I'd be second. Or third, and so the coach finally, after this happened several times, uh, when I started placing, he started leaving me there, <laughs> and I'm going, well, this ain't working. <laughs> and I actually had the high school record for the two mile for 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 many years until uh, long distance became uh, popular, and a young man broke it by like two minutes. I mean, it was like horrible, uh, but I had this record because <laughs> nobody else wanted to compete at that level, and so. Um, so he told me one time, he said, Hurdle, he said, you can't run, you've got no style, your, uh, your rhythm's off. <laughs> he left everything that was wrong. And then he goes, but you just don't quit. And, and I thought, well, that's the way you win the race. And, you know, we always, we grew up, most of us, with the tortoise and the hare and how the, the tortoise eventually won because he didn't quit and the hare took a break or whatever, the rabbit took a break. But, but perseverance is what would keep me in the competition. Just, uh, I would be behind, you know, and then I, and there's all these in front of me. Today, there are people I started out with in this walk with the Lord. Uh, 
Oscar was talking about a spiritual father, you know, having a spiritual father. He's had the same spiritual father for a long, long time. And that's a real blessing. That means that whoever his spiritual father is, they stayed in the race so that he had one. Well, many of them that uh, began sowing into my life, discipling me when I knew absolutely nothing, and I appreciate what they did, but they're not walking with the Lord anymore. They're, they're not living in sin. They're just not doing anything. They just set off to the side. It got too tough or whatever. But so I would keep going, and I look back, and I look back at some of the friends I ran with, people I admired and respected that aren't walking with the Lord anymore. They're not, they didn't stay with what God was saying for the current situation. They camped somewhere where it was comfortable, where everything was explainable and understandable. And I just kept going. I just didn't want to quit, and I still don't want to quit. I just want to keep going into all that God has for us. And I know that if you're here this morning, you're probably of that breed. So uh, welcome to uh, perseverance. Welcome to learning to pray with perseverance. And so I said, well, Lord, what can help us in this season we're in where we're getting hit from the right and the left with these these are worldwide calamities. And uh, on top of that, my granddaughter's in the emergency room. So I've got these that close to me and those far off. And it's just and, uh, situations that, that accumulate that persevering in prayer is not easy. It's just, I just I'm just tired. I just want to not have to try to, uh, you know, believe anymore. You know, believing takes effort. He said um, to Thomas, he said, now, Thomas, look, be not unbelieving, but believing. In other words, make a choice here and do the right thing. But it's going to take effort because you've been hurt so bad, you're not going to believe unless you can put your hand on my side and all that kind of stuff. But once you've done that, now you've got to make a choice. Now believe. And sometimes I just have to drive down a stake, and I say, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it, uh, the circumstances are saying, what other people are saying. I know what the Scripture says. I'm just going to believe the Bible. You say, well, man, that's not easy to do. No, it's not. But that's the only way you get breakthrough is to continue to believe when it's not easy to believe. So um, uh, this passage the Lord gave me, of, of two passages that he gave me, one of them was this one out of the Old Testament, the other one's out of the New Testament. But he highlighted this to me. And he said, you're going to need this to persevere in prayer. And so it's a familiar one. It's Zechariah 4, verses 6 through 7. 6 and 7, and he said, um, so he, he's referring to an angel that was speaking to um, Zechariah, answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Now he's talking to the prophet, the angel's telling Zechariah what the Lord said for Zerubbabel. <laughs> Seemed like it'd be easier just the Lord just to talk to him himself, but <clears throat> that's why we've got to hear the Lord no matter what channel he uses, so... This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Zerubbabel was not the prophet. Zerubbabel was not the priest. Joshua was the priest. Zechariah was the prophet in this uh, scenario. <clears throat> Yet uh, God spoke to the prophet to tell Zerubbabel, he was the governor. He was the one who was uh, uh, governing that whole situation to bring about the restoration and the building of the temple. And um, I think in recent years, I don't think I know, the ecclesia or the remnant of the ecclesia, the ecclesia is the word church is translated from 75 times in the New Testament, but ecclesia describes a governing council. Jesus chose that word on purpose. But an ecclesia has arisen in the church like I've never seen before in the last couple of years who have embraced their role to govern. And I believe the Lord is saying there are some things going to come not through your prophetic and not through your intercession of the priest or the prophetic of the prophet. They're going to come through by those two um, ministering also and giving support, but there's going to be a rising up in my church, in my ecclesia, of those who begin to govern. 
In other words, they take the keys of the kingdom, Matthew 16, 18 and 19. He said, on this rock I'll build my church, and here's the keys of the kingdom, and the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. What you bind on earth, bound in heaven. What you loose on earth, be loose. In other words, those are legal terms. Those are legislative terms. What you forbid will be forbidden. What you allow will be allowed. Now take my keys, take the authority that I've given you, and begin to legislate, begin to govern in the earth, because that's the spirit uh, that's the attitude, that's the personality, the, the, uh, 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 the body of Christ that embraces that will begin to walk in places where there were once uh, a mountain of resistance that blocked you. But he said when you begin to govern and you govern by the Spirit, empowered by the Spirit, that mountain will become a plain. In other words, it'll become a walk in the park. You'll be able to walk in it as if there wasn't a mountain there. Now, Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and heavenly places. Well, we don't move physical mountains either. But Jesus said, say unto the mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. Don't doubt in your heart. So we're not, have you ever heard of anyone from the New Testament church through all of church history that has a testimony of moving a physical mountain? Now, somebody might have, I don't know, but it's not a common thing. I know of uh, when TBN was uh, setting up their network, they prayed about a signal going through a mountain, and it was as if the mountain wasn't there, but it was there still. But the signal went through as if it wasn't there. So that's the closest thing I can think of. But there are some mountains that won't move. There's some mountains that will resist until we step into a governing role as the body of Christ. Not just David, not just you but in agreement and partnering with heaven and empowered by the Holy Spirit, revealed by the Holy Spirit, begin to declare and decree some things over the land, over our lives, over our churches. And so that governing role, he said, I'm going to bless that. And I'm going to allow that to be what establishes and what uh, accomplishes and moves forward where once it was impossible to gain ground. So um, uh, when, when hope deferred has drained you, when your willpower isn't enough anymore, it takes willpower, but it's not enough. He said, it's not by your might. It's not by your willpower. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. I thank God for that. And I thank God for the baptism in the Holy Spirit and the gift of tongues because in this situation like Clay was talking about, I don't really know how to pray because I know some uh, enough history to know it's complicated and I know it's confusing and I know uh, some testimonies coming out of both countries that um, make it not just black and white and cut and dried. And so I thank the Holy Spirit. I know that... He said, when you don't know how to pray, the Spirit will pray through you as you ought to pray with groanings too deep to utter. I had some of those when I watched a video of Ukrainians fighting tanks with Maltive cocktails. You can't help but get like, God, this needs to stop. This needs to stop. These are people that have children, that have homes, and uh, I don't know all the situation, but I know who seems to be the oppressor in this situation, and the oppressor needs to be shut down, and I don't know why they're doing it for sure, but that needs to be changed. The ability of the Holy Spirit to move our hearts into a place of intercession, the ability of the Holy Spirit to speak through us with groanings and with tongues, to pray in tongues and to pray accurately is such, such a, a need. Jude 1.20 says, But you, beloved, build up your foundation for faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Anybody that has not received your prayer language, please come down after the service. I want to pray for you to receive that. Anybody that's not been specifically where you know you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's very clear in the Scriptures. We are indwelt by the Holy Spirit when we believe on Jesus Christ, but there's an experience where he baptizes, he immerses us in the power of the Spirit that we all need in times like this. 
And that's what's going to make the difference in persevering in prayer. Now, another thing is I already referred to the verses when Jesus said, Say unto the mountain, the disciples saw him do the thing to the, uh, the uh, fig tree. And they, they were like, how, how do you do that? How do you have that kind of power where you can cause a fig tree to dry up in one day? And Jesus said to them uh, the, uh, in Mark 11, verse 22 through 24, Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. <laughs> Therefore I say to you, now this is what he's talking about prayer, whatever things you ask when you pray, Believing that you receive them, you will have them. So Jesus uses, this is, how I, this is what I believe happened. He wants his disciples to think a certain way when they begin to pray. And he uses this visual that's so extreme. He didn't say when you pray for your grandma on her, Sacroiliac is healed, whatever that is. <laughs> I know grandma probably has one. I don't know about anybody else. When you pray for the headache and it goes away, when you pray, and whatever, he didn't use something that was minor. He said, when you say, when you govern, when you say, not pray, but when you say to the mountain, be thou removed. And all of a sudden the disciples have in their vi in a visual of, of prayer having the power to move a mountain. And now they're, they're, they're going to, when they, when they pray, they're going to think about, they're going to have a mindset when they step into the place of prayer. He wanted them to have a mindset of stepping on a D9 bulldozer. Can you put that picture up, Ginger, of that bulldozer? This is a D9 armored bulldozer. This is what Israel uses. Uh, they've used it in wartime. They've used it to keep the um, Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict uh, under control. It's, very, it's a, called a controversial machine because of what it's been used for. But it's armored, and that blade on the front, if it don't get it, the rippers on the back do, do get it. And when, when I, I can see Jesus saying, when we pray, we need to see our prayers being as if we step onto that thing. And we're not stepping onto a bicycle to find a path around the mountain. We're stepping onto something that can push, eventually push a way through the mountain or push the mountain out of the way or push down the mountain. And so when you pray, your prayers, he says, are so powerful. Say to the mountain and it'll happen, it'll move. And I'm going, okay, God, how can I get a visual? Well, I'm a, I'm a mechanically minded person, and <clears throat> I can see this in my mind. And so I said, okay, we're going to deal with this thing with the Russia and the Ukraine, and i got to persevere with it. This thing perseveres. you got a low gear, and you just put it in low. This is, this is really a kingdom machine that I'm talking about. You put it in low and it's moving so slow sometimes it doesn't seem like it's moving. But you look back two hours later and it's gone a mile. And it's inexorable is a good word for it. It's inexorable. It just keeps going. It just keeps going. You say, well, you need to get a different machine. That bulldozer's not working. It's not even moving. No, it's moving. There's nothing stopping it. There's nothing holding it back. There's nothing can change its course because it's set to move that mountain. And when you pray to, to persevere in prayer, you've got to see that you didn't just climb on a bicycle. You climbed on a bulldozer. You climbed on something that can move a mountain. And when you crank up, <laughs> you're not cranking up a, a Volkswagen Beetle. You're cranking up a bulldozer. The power to move the mountain. You persevere because you have the power of the Spirit that you've said, Holy Spirit, you've got to help me now. I can't do this on my own. And you persevere because your mindset is right. Your mindset is that I'm dealing with something very powerful. I'm, 
I'm, I'm moving out of a bulldozer mentality, a bulldozer mindset. And so things begin to shake when this thing starts moving. And Isaiah 64, 1 said, Oh, that you would rend the heavens, Lord, that you would come down, that the mountains might shake at your presence. You start, you start this thing up, and it starts moving. And the Lord begins to say, It's not moved yet, but you see those pebbles rolling down the side? You see that boulder, boulder getting looser? You see that tree leaning over? Because this thing eventually persistent persevering prayer of the saints is going to move that mountain it's going to move that mountain and the devil can't stop it his resistance that he's thrown into our path will not continue to stop it for this purpose the son of man was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil yes he came to save us yes he came to call the little flock to himself but he's also looking and scanning for the works of the devil because you know what he's going to do? He's going to throw it in gear. And he's going to go after the works of the devil. He's going to destroy. This what, that's what that, that D9 can do. It can destroy whatever works the devil has raised up. Whatever strongholds he's put in place. The strongholds in our own nation. The strongholds in our in the present administration, the strongholds that Trump called the deep state, that Trump called the swamp, the, the strongholds that have been in place for a lot longer than he was ever in there. We just didn't realize it as much. The stronghold of the fake media that he began that terminology. Thank God he stirred up enough stuff and came in like a wrecking ball so that we began to see what reality really was and what, what we're dealing with. And we're called to deal with the spiritual side of it. The D9 actually means, the D actually stands for dual. That dual traction is going to go places where uh, single traction can't go. I thought of the nine for us as the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. It's both together. You can't, you can't just be all excited about the gifts and let the fruit of the Spirit languish in your life. When you minister out of the fruit, when you minister the gifts out of the fruit, that's bringing the dual nine into place. That's going to move the mountain. Let me just read these to refresh our memory. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For the one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit to the other, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit to another, faith by the same Spirit to the other, gifts of healings by the same Spirit to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. Now, I know from experience there are even more than these. Bill Johnson's grandmother, when she got baptized in the Holy Spirit, wrote in perfect Chinese. That's not listed here. She didn't know how to write in Chinese. But when the missionary came, he said, this is perf perfectly legible. So there's other th ways the Holy Spirit manifests, but he lists nine for our sake. And then the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. When we flow and operate in both the fruit and the gifts simultaneously, we destroy the works of the devil. We can, we can move with the inexorable, unstoppable power of the kingdom of God that we dwell in and that dwells in us. In a sense, Jesus was a walking contra contradiction. He was, he was like saying, if you could see, see, when he would walk up to a situation, the demons would cry out, Oh, Son of God, why have you come to harass us before our time? They were, the mountain was trembling already. All he did was walk up there. Now, in the process of walking up there, he took a, a lady's hand and he would gently raise her up. He was a gentle bulldozer. <laughs> he, if that's possible. He was a contradiction. That's why Judas messed up so bad. Judas saw the bulldozer part and he said, if I can get this guy, if I can set up a conflict between him and the ruling authorities, both the Jewish and the Romans, he's going to bulldoze them under. 
but he didn't realize that it was all part of the plan and his bulldozing, bulldozing them under meant giving up of his life and laying down his life and what a strength and what a, a power that took uh, but his bulldozer ministry removed the great mountain of sin that blocked our reconciliation to God as our Father. And it paved the path with His blood <clears throat> to our adoption as sons and daughters. He was what He's calling us to be. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to Him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we think or ask according to the power at work within us. There's a power at work within us. That's a true statement. And so is Philippians 2.13, for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and do according to His good pleasure. It's, it's the power that's working in us is God. And if those two are true, then Philippians 4.13 is true. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You are a bulldozer, hidden. Paul said we have this power, hidden in vessels of clay, that you might know it's from God and not from us. In other words, I, he looked weak, he, he, he stuttered. Some say he had challenges with his eyesight. And yet he would step up to a situation and he had a power because God was at work in him. The, the two things I want to leave you with that to persevere in prayer that you need to commit to your memory are these two things. When that challenge comes up, what I want to come through your mind is this. And what I want to come out of your mouth is this. Somehow, it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And the other one that I want you to have on your, ready on your lips, I want you to believe it with all your heart. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm telling you there are some things that have risen up when I'm tired, I'm wore out, something comes up, and if I'll respond with, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, the whole atmosphere changes. The whole demeanor of that thing changes. And I've, I've just, all I've done is shifted my mindset to where now I'm on the D9. And we don't need to try to push these things around when we're on bicycles. We need to be on the bulldozer that indwells us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Why don't you stand with me this morning? If you need prayer this morning and if you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you need to, your prayer language, there are people down here that would love to pray with you. Ronnie can help and Darren and Bill and oh, oh, Bart's back there. I saw him, I, testimony last week, you prayed for somebody, that was, they, were beginning, they received a prayer language, right? Hallelujah. So that's, a, that's, a, that's something God gave us because it's something we need. It's not a luxury. If it's a luxury, then you haven't stepped into the season I'm in yet. <laughs> but I think you have. If you've come through 2019, 2020, 2021, then you're at the place where you realize, okay, I need all that Christ made provision for. Father, in Jesus' name, let everyone that's been under the sound of my voice this morning sense a powerful impartation coming into their heart and into their mind into their lives that they're going to begin to think like they're stepping on to a D9 bulldozer when they pray, when they speak when they declare and they're going to expect impossible situations to bow the knee to Jesus because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us because it's not my might or my power I'm leaning on it's the power of God the power of the Holy Spirit Right now, in Jesus' name, devil, I bind you this morning. We bind you together as the legislative body of Christ in the earth. We bind you from harassing with sickness and death all those who have stepped up as intercessors for this nation and other nations. Had another brother on our prayer, on our prayer call team. His brother was killed by a semi-truck last week. Week before we lost Don Lynch to a, a heart issue last year one of the guys on our team lost his wife this is not a big team but we're getting hit it's not a big team it's like maybe two dozen at the max and so the war is real and we've stepped up and we've said okay God we're gonna 
we're going to do what you've asked us to do. And right now, in the name of Jesus, because of what Paul said, pray for all the saints. And he said, and pray for me. Can you imagine this? Paul said, pray for me that I may speak boldly of all people. If Paul couldn't speak boldly, how much do you think we need that? And when you speak boldly, it does stir things up. It does make things happen. But the Lord's saying this morning, this is not a time to be reticent. This is not a time to be timid. This is not a time to, uh, to be nice. Get rid of the Mr. Nice Guy syndrome. Jesus didn't call you to be nice. He called you to destroy the works of the devil. Now, I know the fruit will help us be nice too. But we're letting that override the other part of what he's called us to. So, Father, in Jesus' name, pour out on us that empowerment to see ourselves step onto that D9 bulldozer, armored and ready to go. And, and let her rip. Let her rip. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you this morning. And let your prayers be like you're on a bulldozer. Amen.